So another objection I'd love to talk about is like the idea that, um, well, explanation, well, let's talk about this one. Um, and that's God's decision to create a certain universe may seem arbitrary. Yeah. So we're thinking about like God uh, and looking at like, thinking about like what kind of universe he'd create. Um, and would that just be like some sort of like arbitrary decision? Like why did he choose this universe where we exist rather than some other one? Um, because yeah. it seems like then we'd have some sort of like arbitrary thing that exists without any further explanation. Um, obviously you could say like, Maybe it's contingent because God's causing it. So we have some explanation, but maybe it just seems like brute almost in a sense. Cause there's like not really a good reason for like God creating this universe as opposed mm-hmm. to like another one. So I'm curious. What yeah. you're thinking. There might be some open options there. Um, my view is that God's decision to create the world is motivated by positive qualities in, in particular love. I think that God loves to create and loves us and is motivated by the side of the value of us and the side of the value of creation. But maybe God's side of these valuable things uh, leaves open options of like, which way should things be created? It's like if you're making a picture, you could paint two different beautiful pictures or both beautiful. And maybe there's just really an open end. It's not like one is like more beautiful than the other. Maybe there's no way of comparing that. And so that will allow there to be a kind of freedom even for for God in terms of how to create. But the creation then won't be arbitrary because it would be motivated by and explained in terms of these positive, um, the site of value. Um, and, and then the site of value in turn is grounded in terms of its more foundational nature of being supreme. And so seeing all, including all that is valuable. Maybe I've been thinking about this lately. It's like maybe what it sees first is itself, Okay. And mm-hmm. so this gives it sight of uh, a value. It gives it sight of knowledge of its own um, personhood. And that gives it sort of the resources in a sense to even understand like what persons are to then create others in its own image. Um, you know, and, and there's different ways you could maybe spell that out, but, you know, cause I'm not saying this takes place across time. Maybe mm-hmm. it's, it's um, instant it's, but it takes place in a sort of explanatory chain. Um, or maybe it does take place across time, you know, my argument leaves that open, but I would say my own view is just that all of God's acts will have a further explanation in terms of its nature, in terms of its site of value. It's just that, and here's the important point. It's just that its site of value may not be a deterministic explanation. So when mm-hmm. I say there are no arbitrary limits, I'm not saying that um, limits can only have deterministic explanations. Maybe there could be certain limits and boundaries and configurations that are non-deterministically explained by prior states. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I'm tracking with you because it's similar. So like, I think about this as like, so like God's creation of the universe, maybe there is like no further explanation. Um, It's indeterministic and God just had this choice and this is what he chose. Um, It seems like to me, that's still like the better option when we're looking at like saying, like compared to saying, well, there's just like a foundational layer that's arbitrary limited and there's no further explanation. Um, Cause at least like our explanation or like the theistic one would still be like, have a contingent, like, I don't, I don't want to say bruteness, but like a contingent, like indeterministic, like factor compared yeah, to- There's like a the- difference between a, a brute unexplained contingency mm-hmm. and a non-deterministically explained contingency. Those are yeah. so different. The non-deterministically explained contingency is explained. Mm -hmm. It's just the explanation relation is not a necessitating relation. And I think this Mm -hmm. is actually part of our own ordinary experience. We experience ourselves doing things for reasons and those reasons motivate and explain our actions. Even if they don't force us, you know, if I, if I get a drink of water and Rachel's like, why did you do that? I'm like, oh, I was thirsty. (laughs) That's why I did that. She's not going to say, well, Josh, it was logically possible that you were thirsty and you still don't do that. No, she's going to say, okay, that is an explanation of why you did that. Even if it's not deterministic. Mm-hmm. And so that's very, very different than I just did that. And there was nothing behind that at all. Not, mm-hmm. a, not a determinist explanation, not even a non-determinist explanation. Um, that, that's another kind of thing entirely. So I'm totally with you there that the argument is removing brute contingencies, brute facts, brute states, like as far as we can. And if mm-hmm. there's a place where it has to be brute and there's no further possible explanation, well, then great we've arrived at fundamental reality right (laughs) so yeah